Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Messaging. I'm Emma Stratton, and today I'm joined by the wonderful Mary Sheehan, Head of Products Marketing at Adobe Ad Cloud. Hey, Mary. Hi, Emma. Thanks so much for having me. So excited to be part of this. Yeah, it's so cool to talk to you. So Mary, tell me, I would love to know, when was the last time that something happened to you that you were just like, damn, I love being a product marketer? Well, every day, but in particular, <laughs> besides every day, <laughs> in particular this year, you know, COVID affected everyone in a major way, individuals, yes. businesses, et cetera. And the advertising business was definitely affected by this in a major way. I think a lot of brands that, you know, typically advertise got really freaked out when yep. COVID hit and a lot of them were unclear about how they should be interacting with their customers, what they should be saying, if they should even be advertising at all. So when that first happened and we first did shelter in place last March, having been through something kind of similar with the 2009 recession, I really jumped into action and thought, you know, what are the things that would make people feel a little bit better about knowing what the game plan is moving forward with so much ambiguity. So I put together a white paper building on a lot of the research from 2009 era stats and surveys about keeping the lights on and being there for your customers in terms of business continuity. And what the research overwhelmingly points to is that if you are there for your customers and you continue to be in front of them, then they will remember you in the long run. You will have that long-term customer relationship. So put together some um, quick research based on past findings and developed a white paper in about nine days. So, <laughs> you know, got it approved, got a lot of, um, you know, uh, quick, quick responses from a writer, from a designer, pulled it all together. And it ended up being this amazing series that kicked off um, a longer term research project that we were able to do with consumers and marketers alike that helped us understand how you should be messaging to your customers during COVID. We were actually the first company to come out and say, you know, everyone is sick of those we're here for you ads. Let's move on to something more authentic. We helped our brands really understand how to segment and identify demographic trends, um, generational trends that we were seeing. And it was really cool. And I, I felt like I was really helping people in a time of need, helping other marketers understand, you know, what they should be doing in a time that none of us had ever experienced before, of course. So I think had I not had a product marketing background and had I not been used to working with a ton of different stakeholders and bringing together all these different pieces, there's no way I would have even known how to get started or had the kind of gumption to get it going and get it done so quick, but it ended up being really helpful. And I was so thankful to have that product marketing experience to have that and it ended up being really impactful for a business too. So it was all, it was great. And I think that that product marketing and that messaging experience too came to bear with this project in particular. That is so awesome. I'm really, really impressed because, you know, I'm in the creative industry as well. And at that moment when it happened, it was like, oh, will people ever advertise again or advertising feels wrong? It was a really interesting time where it was like, this feels icky to even think about marketing when all this is happening. Uh -huh. And, you know, there was that initial paralysis that a lot of companies had and then cue the you know, the, um, the overdone hackneyed phrases, like you said, like the, we're here for you. We're in this together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool that, you know, you kind of galvanized the company to take, you know, a bold, decisive step in, in a direction when everyone was like, kind of, you know, dipping their toe in the waters. So, yeah. um, I think that's super cool story. I think that's really, really awesome. So, you know, you, you talk about having, you know, a lot of experience, like working with different stakeholders and getting these big initiatives moving. I'd love to hear like, you know, what is your process when it comes to creating a messaging strategy for you know, a campaign or for a company? Like, how do you really tackle that in a process? Definitely. So my ideal process, because as you know, sometimes you're limited on time and scope, but my ideal process is actually starting internally with either a workshop or a survey questionnaire where you ask your internal stakeholders. So from the people that are really hands-on keyboard, talking to customers every day to the leadership, what are the words that they think really describe your company? Where do you differentiate? 
And then where would they like to see you go in the next three years? And just those three questions in of themselves are so powerful to get a sense of the words that they're using to understand, you know, their philosophy about the company and where they perceive the differentiation. So then I love to take that, that input, you know, imagine all the word clouds you can make out of this kind Ooh, of stuff. I'm in heaven. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> word cloud slides. But more than that, I usually take that, put it into the classic messaging house. So I literally have a slide that is a house and it has oh. you know, the foundational um, three pillars of what your messaging strategy is going to be. I do a classic positioning statement. And then, you know, the features and kind of reasons why we win at the, at the end there as well. And then I start to get some more feedback internally, fine tune it, and then put it in a, in a format that a customer can react to. So if you shared something like that with a customer, they would say, are you crazy? What is this? So yeah. I like to take that, that input and actually then translate it from the sort of positioning world to the messaging world and do a mock-up of a website or an ad creative so they can really react to that. And so at this phase, I love to do more on, you know, one-on-one -on -one informational interviews or even focus groups to get feedback on what resonates with them and what doesn't. And then if I have even more time and you can do this now so quickly, which is great, I'm taking a few of your favorite concepts and actually putting it in a quick survey and having... A, you know, a broader group of customers and prospects actually say what resonates with them. So actually having many little ad creatives or many little website mock-ups with a tagline or with some new messaging about a product launch and have them really react to what they think is the best and why, and you can get so much information. So then at the end of the day, you kind of taken the emotion out of it. You started with the heart at the company, you've gotten some feedback from customers, and then you have this quantitative lens and it really helps the wordsmithing and the creative process a lot, especially when you're going to reviews and you have the CEO telling you he doesn't like that particular word. You can actually yeah. <laughs> back it up with data. So it's, it's pretty cool when you can go through that whole process and, you know, even taking bits and pieces of that, I found it be, to be really effective when you're trying to get a new messaging concept out there. Yeah, I love that. I love the idea of testing real creative because people need to see it in context. It's, mm -hmm, it's, you can't mm -hmm. leave it in the messaging house. Question about when you do the surveys with all your stakeholders, I mean, those are big foundational questions you're asking, but typically are you finding there's a lot of alignment or are you finding that people tend to use describe things differently within the company? What What's most common to you? Do you see that alignment or, or not? It depends. And I think it it shows you a bit about the company when you do this exercise, actually. So right. I used to do consulting and I would go into kind of series A companies or seed funded companies. And those ones seemed to actually be the most aligned because they were smaller and they yes. had you know one or two leaders. They were constantly talking about their message. And so everyone from the engineering lead to the CEO would kind of say the same thing. So I do find when you get to bigger companies, and there's a lot of other priorities, it's a little bit more disparate. So that's that's the trends I've seen. So you're trying to figure out how to align, how to make that all kind of come together. And sometimes it does bring up these fundamental questions about who do we want to be right. or saying different things. So that can actually, you know, open Pandora's box a bit, depending on how big the project it is. If you're doing a value prop review versus, you know, a feature launch or something, obviously you're going to have different responses there, but I think it can be really insightful no matter how you do it, but you might get more than you bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Pandora's box for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mary, I would love to kind of get your thoughts on differentiation, right? Differentiation is something that just a lot of companies quite frankly, obsess over and <laughs> have their mind on. And it always comes into messaging discussions. So what are your thoughts on differentiation? So I think it's one of the hardest concepts for new marketers and for people outside of product marketing to really get, you know, there's often a focus on being better than a competitor, being the best, the fastest, you know, the smartest, what have you, but really for customers, they are looking for something salient to grab onto that makes you unique and different in their minds. So they can make that choice and understand why they're making that choice. So when it comes to messaging, you know, a lot of us work in tech in really crowded marketplaces. We are kind of fighting for that two to 5% of differentiation that we might have on top of, you know, everything else compared to the competitors. So when you're thinking about messaging, 
I find one of the hardest things to do in a really competitive space is to not throw the kitchen sink at the message, but to really focus on the differentiation and to get alignment. And differentiation can be something with the technology, it can be services that you provide, it can be something to do with even, you know, customer success or the bundle, the price, everything that, you know, your company really stands for. It doesn't have to just be a, a product differentiation. It can be anything within that package. So I think really highlighting and getting to the core of what makes you different and how people, your customers, your prospects would be able to choose between you and a competitor is something to really focus on when you're reviewing copy, when you're thinking about your messaging plan, really make sure to focus in on that because we're all in crowded spaces. And so how will people know how to choose you? So try to just bring it back to the basics when we have those conversations internally. Yeah, I love that, Mary. I love that you say it's not just a feature differentiation because I think that's always where companies usually go, right? To that that feature differentiation. And you mentioned customer success. I know when engagements I've run doing interviews with customers, that's typically the thing that does differentiate companies and why customers love them is that customer success and that level of support. You hear that a lot and it kind of never gets that, um, you know, the, the stage that I think it deserves. So thanks for calling that out. Yeah. Right. Um, so while we're on the topic of differentiation and, and messaging, you know, I love to ask people this, if there was a word or a phrase that you could banish uh, from marketing or product marketing for all of eternity, what would it be? So I was thinking about this and I have a list, but my pet peeve is probably the most pet peeve. This is the most used sentence in a product launch release is we are so excited to announce. Oh my if gosh. You, if you go through any product launch from any time period over the last, let's say 25 years, the first sentence of let's say 90% of them will be, we are so excited to blank, 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 blank. So I really always push my team to not say that and come up with a different way because everyone is so excited, obviously, but it yeah. doesn't really matter. Why should your customers and your prospects be excited about what you're launching? So that's probably the biggest thing I'm a stickler about, but, and I want to actually write an article about how all of these companies are doing it. So look forward to that, but that would be what I would banish forever. <laughs> I think that's, that's really, really good. Mary, it's so good talking to you. And um, you've got a podcast as well on Sharebird, right? Would you mind just sharing a bit about that? Because I think our viewers would really be into watching. Absolutely. Yes. So Women in Product Marketing is the podcast. And we're just starting our second season, just started recording this very recently. So very excited to get this out. I said my own word, but uh, it's been such a wonderful experience. We have women leaders in product marketing that have started their careers in product marketing and are now VPs or CMOs or their directors of product marketing. And we go into their journeys of how they got there, some of their superpowers about how they really work and tick. And it's just been such a wonderful experience. And I hope your listeners will join me on the podcast as well. It's been really fun to share it and such a great thing to be able to connect uh, during these virtual times. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mary, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. I will definitely check out Women in Product Marketing and I hope uh, all of you will as well. Thank you for watching another episode of Adventures in Messaging and we'll catch you next week.